Snow totals are about to go up big time as the winter storm track shifts to the east and cold air, yeah, it's continuing to pour out of the Arctic directly into the lower 48. And that, my friends, is a theme that you'd better get used to because we're going to be talking about storms and rumors of storms for the next month at least. The heart of winter is here, snow is falling, a storm is developing in the plains, and another storm is imminent along the east coast, and it is only November. <laughs> Welcome into the channel, friends. Jason is my name, gearing up for a big time winter this year, and we have a lot to cover today, including the pattern upcoming, what we're looking at for December, some of the signals that still exist there. We've got a storm developing in the plains, dumping heavy snow for Iowa into the Chicagoland area and places around there. And we've got another storm system working into the northeast United States. It's going to bring a lot of snow for some places up there as well. We're going to look at all of that, plus a fantasy storm kicked out by one of the models just beyond day 10 for the south. But first up on the block is the weather pattern as we head into the month of December. We've looked at this a lot and we'll continue to do so because things can and do change. And right now, they're changing for the better if you like cold and snow, particularly in the east and the central portion of the country. If you like warm air, you need to head on out to the west. It's looking more and more likely that's where it's going to set up shop as we get into December. I'm going to show you why that is here in just a second. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below, join the team, Help me push the content out to more and more people. Share the video and like it. And if you have a comment or a question or a prayer request, please put it in the comment section. All that helps you to put the video out. I'd like to know where you're commenting from, too, where you're watching from. And if you're seeing any snow out there, particularly in the uh, Midwest here in the Corn Belt, let me know. I'd love for it to snow for you and for me down here in North Carolina eventually. Hopefully, we'll get our uh, share as we get on into December. I think we will. And uh, in any event, what you're looking at here as we look at the pattern is the European Ensemble five-day mean 850 millibar temperature profile. That's about a mile off the ground. It sort of gives a good proxy of where it's above and below normal at the surface, smooths out those nighttime diurnal heating cycles. You know, you cool off at night, you warm up in the daytime. To show the surface temps, it just goes up and down. It's kind of noisy. This smooths that out. That's why we look at it. This is a five-day average way out here on December the 4th. So you can see much of the center and eastern portion of the country is cooler than average. The purples are much cooler than average, and the reds are much above normal the way out here in the Pacific. Now, I'm just going to run this whole thing through. This is the 0 Z run from overnight. Look at this. We're going out here the next five days, the next five days, the next five days, the next five days just, just increases in one day increments all the way out to the end of the run. What did you notice? Warm air out west and cool air centered over the Great Lakes pouring into the east. And this smooths everything out as you get on out in time. And you would imagine that there will be some days that are warm and some days that are cool. And that comes out to an average of below normal as we get on through the end of this run. That takes us to mid-December. Is the GFS in agreement with that? Well, it is for the first five days. What happens as we go on out uh, through time here? This is the 6Z GFS. So we'll get on it here to uh, 10 days. So this is days five or six through 10. Still cool for much of the eastern portion of the country, save the far south. And then eventually, 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 it warms us up for much of the nation. I don't believe this. And I'll tell you why I don't believe it in a second. But the GFS is slowly kind of coming around to what the European ensemble has been showing. This, this let's get on a better display here and we can see it better. There you go. This is a three-run trend of the GFS centered at day 10. Look at that. A couple of runs ago, one, two, this is a four-run trend. My bad. Four runs ago, it was warm, and now for the last couple of runs, it's trending cooler here in the east. Expect that to continue because tropical forcing is playing a role, and the GFS is finally starting to see tropical forcing set up a little bit better. Here is the AI. Look at the AI all the way out at the end of its run. This is the European AI, the 6Z run. And again, we're looking at five-day averages. So the day, days uh, uh, four, uh, day 11 to 15, very cool in the east. And I think these warm anomalies here in the center of the country are a little bit too far to the east. I think what we'll see as we get on out in time is this pattern begin to shift back. So you've got two major ensemble suites advertising a cold pattern for the next two weeks. And I believe that is going to be the case, end up being the case because of this main reason here. Look at this. Here's our MJO. Remember how the GFS was trying to kill this in phase seven? 
Not so much. It's finally starting to see it make it into phase eight, and it's going to kill it in the circle of death. That's probably too premature, but this takes us all the way out through mid-December now in uh, the GFS camp. Okay, this is the GFS ensemble. What about the European ensemble? Look at this. It has been pretty steadfast bringing the MJO into phase eight. That is a cold phase for much of the central and eastern portion of the country, and it keeps it in here through part of uh, December all the way through three quarters of the month. If we look at the European monthly or the weeklies, this runs it all the way into January almost, and uh, it keeps it in phase eight, brings it into the circle, but I think it's that's just killing the convection wave that travels around the equator. I think probably what will happen is this will stay a coherent wave and it'll get into phase one and eventually phase two, both of which are increasingly colder as we get into the winter. See what's going on there? JMA, the same thing into phase eight. Phase eight's a cold phase and we can uh, certainly agree that if the MJO stays coherent, it likely will influence the pattern to be colder than normal and we find uh, opportunities for snow when you have a cold pattern and an active pattern, which we do. Okay, so those are two signals that are really huge that are coming together to uh, make a uh, forecast for a cool December into January. Very reasonable. Here's the stratosphere. It warms up a little bit as we get on into the middle portion of December. Then we get another warming event taking shape that uh, knocks it back a bit. This is the stratospheric polar vortex. We want this as weak as possible to allow the tropospheric a jet stream to kind of uh, meander around and bring in cold shots. So this is good too. If we had a really strong vortex, I'd have some second thoughts, but we've got a weaker than normal vortex, as you can see by the mean, which is this blue line. The red is the actual average. And so we're below average with the strength. And a lot of the members keep it below that. So we shall see how the stratospheric polar vortex plays a role. But if we get a secondary warming here, that could continue to influence the pattern well into January. So we'll watch that how that all plays out. And just taking a look at the cryosphere, since we haven't looked at this a couple of days, plenty of snow developing up here and laying down up in Canada, which is what we want. And now we're seeing more snow build in the United States. And if you want to get winter weather down here in the south and over here in parts of the lower mid-Atlantic and back into the southeast, you need snowpack up here. It, you don't need it, but it helps and uh, certainly keeps that cool air uh, cool as it moves across very, very cold snowpack. And so that's what we're looking at. There's your snow cover extent right here. See there? Same thing I showed you here pretty much. So that's what we're doing. We're building that snowpack. Well, that's what's going on from a pattern standpoint. Very encouraging if you like winter weather and cool air too. Now, we're going to take a look at the big snowstorm that's ongoing in the Midwest Corn Belt up into the Great Lakes. And then we've got some interesting developments out uh, in time as we head into early next week and then beyond over in the east. All right, snowstorm number one underway here in the nation's midsection. We talked about this yesterday, getting its act together and develop it did through the course of the evening. And now we've got a wide area of snow falling from the Dakotas back into Indiana. And we're seeing some convective banding in here too. If we roll this in, you can see up through just east of Omaha, back in toward Des Moines and Ames near Cedar Rapids. You're seeing some of that convective banding just south of Chicago. That's where the snow is falling at rate of one to two inches per hour. It will pile up quickly. And back here in the southern Iowa and northern uh, Missouri as well, over into Illinois near Springfield, seeing a lot of snow. St. Louis is getting in on the action too. This rain snow line will be pushing to the east and slightly north as we get through the day as the center of circulation moves on to the north. Rain and maybe even a couple of lightning strikes down south. But it is going to be a snowy, snowy winter-like day here on uh, November the 29th. That's what the date is. Gosh, it's hard to believe. Look at all the alerts here. Pinks, everywhere in pink, and this covers much of multiple states. We're looking at winter storm warnings and then sort of this bluish periwinkle is winter weather advisories. We're gonna see more than a foot of snow fall in some of these areas here. As a matter of fact, if we take a look at uh, the HRRR, it's doing a great job matching up where the precipitation is right now. And so I'm just gonna roll this along through the afternoon. Heavy snow moving into East Iowa, into Illinois from Springfield north to Chicago and Indiana and from Indianapolis north to Gary and South Bend and places up there and even parts of Ohio, Northern Ohio getting in on the action, of course, Wisconsin and Michigan too. The heaviest snow is going to fall kind of in this zone, and we'll take a look at that snowfall map. As we go through the evening hours, 8 o'clock, it'll be winding down here in Iowa and up in Minnesota, but still cranking on 
heavily up into the Chicagoland area, northern Indiana, into Michigan and Wisconsin, and that will taper off as we get through the evening hours and head toward tomorrow morning. We'll stop it here at 8 a.m. East Coast tomorrow, and the low is centered up here in Michigan, and of course, rain will be on the south side of that low, and so as you get to the, the southern parts of that, so if we roll this back, as a matter of fact, I'll just show you this so you can see it through Indiana and Ohio, that rain snow line will push in. And so it will turn over to rain at some point as we get through the evening hours tonight and overnight hours. But uh, you'll see for sure, that's kind of neat how the uh, low pressure goes over the lakes. You get that lift over the warm lakes and it's rain there. <laughs> but uh, in any event, um, you won't have a lot of rain to fall, just some scattered showers. So probably washed snow off a little bit, but in any event, it's going to be a good deep snow for a portion of uh, the Midwest here and the nation's midsection. As a matter of fact, if we roll this on, this is the national blend of models. You can see good bet that parts of Iowa up in here toward northern Illinois over to Chicago, southern uh, Wisconsin, we're looking at the Cedar Rapids area. We're looking at about a foot, maybe even more than that. If things wind up and come together and some of these bands set up, you could see upwards of, of 18 inches, maybe even two feet in some areas. As a matter of in fact, if we take a look here out of the Quad Cities, plenty of 10 plus inch uh, area or reports of snow expected across all of this entire area from Cedar Rapids to Ottawa up to Woodstock and Whitewater, looking at plenty of snow here. If we take a look at what the upper echelon uh, threshold of this storm is, it's a lot more than that, 15 inches plus, even approaching two feet as you get on up here into Sterling and Woodstock and parts of Northern Illinois and uh, near Chicago. That is just, an, uh, would be an incredible amount of snow. You guys haven't seen a lot of snow like that in a while, I think. Looking out of the Chicago office, Chicago official forecast is around 9 inches, 9, 10 inches with some scattering of 12-inch uh, totals in here. But if we take a look at the high-end threshold here, we're looking at a close to 2 feet up in Chicago. I'm not saying this is going to happen. This is a low percentage chance, but it does have a high ceiling, this storm, and uh, it could... We could be busting a little bit low with some of these official totals. We'll just have to see how that banding sets up as the storm continues to wind up. And it's going to be windy, too. Look at this. Winds gusting into the 40s this afternoon, potentially up into um, Illinois. And as we get on into the overnight hours tonight, things will quiet down a bit, picking back up here in Iowa with uh, winds on the backside of the storm into the 20s. 30s, maybe even a couple of reports of 40 here and there, gusts the 40s and uh, up in Indiana and parts of Kentucky and Tennessee where it's raining down here. And then uh, northern Ohio, we're getting gusts into the 30s and 40s as well. So it's going to be a windy day, kind of a, you know, wind driven snow and parts of these areas are going to be wet snow. So it's going to stick, you know, it's going to be a dry, fluffy snow, especially on the southern end of that track where it's uh, getting closer and closer to freezing. So that's the forecast for that storm. Now we've got some interesting things to look at as we get into next week and beyond. We're going to look at that right now. This is a lot of fun, folks. I hope you're having fun, too. We're going to have a lot of fun if you enjoy tracking winter weather. This is the place to be. This channel is for you because we're going to enjoy that, and we're going to do a lot of it as we go through the month of December and probably beyond that, too. We'll continue to monitor the pattern as we get out. It's hard to know exactly how things are going to unfold through the entire winter, but we'll watch it, and I'll keep you posted on it. Right now, I'm going to keep you posted on a sneaky little freezing rain potential for parts of the foothills and the escarpment through the night tonight into the morning. Shouldn't be a big deal, but uh, definitely check those road conditions as you head out to church in the morning. We get on out there and we're looking at some pink little uh, pixels showing up here. That's the model trying to indicate there's freezing rain about uh, in the foothills. High pressure's retreating out, so it's not a good setup for a big ice storm, but certainly could be some chilly uh, air trapped against the mountains and, and close to freezing in spots as this light precipitation moves in. Heavier rain and thunderstorms back into Louisiana and Alabama and rain, rain up into the Tennessee Valley, but uh, again, again, it's going to be kind of starting off very cold here in the western portion of the country or the, the western portion of North Carolina. I think the biggest problems, if we see any at all, will be in western Virginia and eastern West Virginia. And then all of that cold air gets scoured out as the system kind of moves in and things kind of warm up. But it's going to be a cloudy, dreary day in the southeast tomorrow. And then eventually everything clears out overnight tomorrow night. But look what happens as we get on into early next week. Another storm system takes shape. And the NAM has this tracking through the Tennessee Valley. I don't necessarily think it'll do that. I think it's going to be a little bit farther east. But still, there's going to be cold air trapped against the mountains. And again, we could be dealing with some freezing rain issues. Some of the other models are a little bit less enthusiastic than the NAM, and I think depending on the track, it will uh, matter to how much freezing rain eventually shows up here. But I don't think, again, it's not a situation where it's going to be a big ice storm and it doesn't look like it's going to turn into that. So not concerned here, but some heavy rain could fall across the south anyway as we get on into next week. Now, 
The interesting stuff happens as we get up here in the northeast. Look at this. By tw uh, about 8 a.m., is what I'm trying to say, 8 a.m. Tuesday, snow is breaking out here in Ohio and up into Pennsylvania, New York, and western Massachusetts, even uh, parts of... Um, uh, Connecticut here up into uh, Vermont and New Hampshire, all but coastal areas get a nice little snow event out of this. The GFS tracks this system along the coast and it brings the rain snow line back in here toward uh, Hartford and uh, back in uh, to um, just, uh, of course, ar around pr probably close to Albany, I would say, and then back into Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And south of that, you'll be in the rain if you follow the GFS. And then it cranks the system on up to 996, moves it on up, and interior sections from New Hampshire, Vermont, up into Maine get plenty of snow out of this, maybe 6 to 10 inches of snow in spots. That's the GFS. Now, if we take a look at what the European is showing, this is the latest run of the European. Let's bring this on through and look what it's doing. It's keeping the track a little farther offshore. That would keep Boston down to Hartford and uh, northern, um, uh, northern New Jersey here, just north of Philly, back into Harrisburg, Allentown, places like that. You all be experiencing a little bit of uh, heavy snow out of this thing with the European tracking this along a little bit farther to the east than the GFS is. And uh, Boston, you go over to rain eventually, unfortunately, if you're looking for that. Bangor, though, Augusta looking at snow up here. And then the system pulls up, windy conditions. And as we get on out toward overnight Tuesday into early Wednesday morning, everything is clearing up out there. So a little bit of model discrepancy as we go on out in time. The Canadian is a little bit more, I think, in alignment with the European, or at least the last version was. Let's just roll this along and see what happens here. Here's the Canadian. What's that low pressure doing way over here? That's not going to work. Uh, it's kind of moved inland a little bit, uh, like kind of following the GFS. This is the latest Canadian. So my thinking is that we're going to see, since we don't have a big high pressure to the northwest pushing all of this down, we're looking at a better potential for this riding up close to the coast of the I-95 cities, New York City, Long Island, Ron Kakama, and places like that are going to probably stay in the rain for this one and then maybe get a little backside snow as the system pulls away. But certainly you could see um, where it stays all snow, 6, 8, 10 inches, somewhere in that range. But it's going to be a quick hitter, and if there's a skew, I think the skew is going to be to have this thing track a little closer to the coast than what last night's European showed. Well, we'll see, or the 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 um, 6Z run. We'll see what the 12Z run shows, but my guess is probably it's going to keep the I-95 and uh, areas into the east well into the rain for the most part. So that's what we're looking at. But out in time, we're certainly going to be tracking more events together, and there'll be plenty of opportunities for big snow up here in the northeast including the I-95 cities. And there you go. There's your kind of snowfall total from the national blend of models. And this is as of 12Z today. So there you have it. And uh, looking at six to eight inches from central uh, and southern Vermont and New Hampshire up into Maine, back into New York State. All but the southern uh, sections here can look, you know, can expect to pick two or three two or three inches, something like that. So that's what we're looking at right now. Again, keep your eye on the track of it. That'll make the difference. And that's the show for today. That's the video. Tomorrow we'll do another video and uh, have an idea of what the pattern is going to continue to look like. We'll keep our eyes on the ball there. And if you have any questions, as I said, put those in the comments and uh, tune in tomorrow for another update. And follow me on X too. I'll post there quite a bit at Real Cold Rain. So there we have it, folks. Hope you have a great Saturday afternoon and a wonderful weekend ahead. And we'll talk to you soon. Take care and God bless.